Okay. He who finds his happiness within, his joy within, and likewise his only light within, the yogi becomes divine and attains to the beatitude, beatitude of God, which is Brahma Nirvana. In Shri, this verse, Shri Krishna explains the fifth quality needed for Samadarshi, seeing with the equal eye, which is Atma Yeva Bhogya Kalpana, meaning finding one's happiness and joy in the soul. The person described in this verse remains calm and steady within and finds all his joy within. Cha gahi chahat niti manva be parva jisko kuch na jaye wo shao ka sha. He who doesn't desire anything is the emperor of all emperors. A Hindi poet has said it very nicely. Jinke bitar diye jalte hai vahi ghar se bahar nikalte hai. Those who have lights lit inside them, only those come out of their houses. One who has the light of his soul is a, a lit is a yogin who becomes divine and attains the beatitude of God. Such a person becomes one with Brahman, God. The word Nirvana is worth understanding properly. It's, it, many people have heard it, but you have to understand the meaning of it. Buddha liked this word of Vedanta so much that he didn't call it Mukti, liberation, he only called it Nirvana. Buddha had his own Maha Nirvana. The word Nirvana comes from lamps. When you put melted butter in a lamp and the fl flame is alight, then we see that it's only one flame that's lit. Knowledge people say that this is not one flame because this flame keeps changing. This is because one flame comes, gives up his light, then goes off. Then another flame immediately comes. This flame goes away, and a third one comes, and then a fourth one. The flame keeps changing, it cannot be the same flame. The flame keeps changing, but it changes so quickly that we cannot, don't even think that, it's, uh, we think that it's one flame. We think that there's a consistency. Just like when you go to see a film, you see on the screen, only one film, but all the photo frames are different. If the actor in the film picks up a rose and gives a rose to someone, then all these actions are not in one film. It's a set of actions happens in one second, and in that second about hundred photos have been taken. There's a photo for each and every slight movement made between picking up the rose and giving that rose to someone. These hundred photos move with such speed in one second that we think that all these actions have happened in one film. This is called a consistency of vision in physics and optics. The same consistency of vision happens when we see a flame. There is not just one flame, there are many flames that keep coming and going. Then when the melted butter runs out, what happens is that the last flame that is there goes away and a new flame does not come. In the villages of India, people say that flame has bujavo, died. We say that the flame has become rano, blow, blown out. In the word Rano, there is the word Nirvana. That means that the last flame went away. This is the very name of Nirvana. In the same way, each of our lives is like a flame. The flames keep changing and that is why we get a new body every time. There may have been some time passed between switching bodies, but when compared to the time of eternity, this time appears next to nothing. The flame was alight during the 1.4 million births that we had until uh, this one. The individual soul was like this flame throughout all these lives. But now this in individual soul has reached a human body, then if nirvana happens, then it won't need to have another body and another flame. Such a person attains to the beauty of God, Brahma Nirvana. Brahma Nirvana is a very high level. There is no new flame left to come. There is no need for a new body. There is a reason why there is no need for a new body. If you look at it from the level of the body, then all we can see is all these bodies changing. If we go a little deeper, then the reason why we have to set these different bodies is the desires in our minds. We have as many births as the number of desires in our minds. When we look at them, then these wishes, desires and volitions are very different, but they keep coming up one after another that we, d we think that there's a, strong, a string of wishes running. The string of wishes is not continuous, it's a bunch of pieces. I'll show you a small experiment that you can do sitting down at home and you'll know. When four or five of you have gathered together, when it's exactly 5.20, then start talking and remembering the conversation topic you started on. Start talking at 5.20 between a bunch of you and remember the conversation topic you started on. Let the talking run. Keep giving replies to what other people say and after talking and talking and talking, when it reaches 5.30, Hold out until that last topic that comes up in the conversation. You'll have written the conversation topic you started on and the conversation topic you finished on after 10 minutes. 
When you compare the two conversation topics, then you see that neither of them had any relation whatsoever. They have absolutely no relation whatsoever, and yet you talk for 10 minutes, there was such a good flow and such a nice interest that one would have not even realized this absurdity for one second. The reason for this, that all of these are the desires of a person. If nobody else is there, and if you study what is running your own mind, then you won't even need to go and ask someone else. Start this experiment at, let's say, 7 p.m. Write down the thought you have in your mind. Sit down quietly and let your mind run. At 7.15 p.m., write the thought that is there in your mind. In the last exercise, you could have said that it was because the other person was there that the topic of the conversation changed. But now, even when you're on your own, the topic of your thought has completely changed within a short period of time. There is no consistency, yet you do not know that you've trained your thoughts uh, to completely something, change your thoughts to completely unrelated. Why? This is because thoughts come one after another so continuously. When you just have one resolve that you wish to become one with Brahman, then this will be the last flame. After this flame, no new flame will come. That's why it's called Nirvanam. This is called Nirvana. This desire should not be changed. One flame cannot stay for a long time. As soon as the last flame gets blown off, the liberation is certain. Despite being so straightforward, we do not grasp this thought because our way of thinking is wrong. A person creates other resolves and goals in order to be free from this goal. One cannot be free from this goal by creating other goals. One must break from the support from which all these thoughts come. Thinkers give an example. You may think why I'm giving examples of psychiatrists. The reason why is the fifth chapter of the Gita is all about the mind and we have to see all these illnesses of the mind. Kachalal, a fictional character, went to a psychiatrist and the psychiatrist asked him what was wrong. Kachalal has now become a regular patient with the psychiatrist. The psychiatrist thought this was a good thing. Kachalal said that for the last 10 or 12 days, he has been suffering from an odd illness. The psychiatrist asked him what this illness was. Kachalal said that as soon as he went to bed to try and sleep, then he would think that there's someone underneath the bed. He would immediately lose his sleep and get up. This would happen for 45 minutes and then Kachalal would look underneath the bed and nobody would be there. He would then close his eyes and again start thinking that there's somebody else underneath his bed. Kachalal just could not sleep and he would decide to go sleep underneath the bed. Kachalal would go to sleep underneath the bed but then he would think that there's somebody on the bed. Because of this, Kachalal cannot sleep throughout the entire night. His mind is occupied with the thought of either somebody being on his bed or somebody being underneath his bed. Kachala just can't sleep. The psychiatrist scratched his pencil on his head and thought that this is a very serious problem. He said that this treatment will run for two years and that Kachala would have to come for sitting and consultation with him twice a week. The fee for each week would be 500 pounds. This would entail Kachala paying 2,000 pounds a month. These thoughts are very expensive because they would cost Kachala over 4,000 pounds throughout the two years. Kachala said that if it costs so much, then go and ask uh, think about whether he can spend this much money. The psychiatrist said that this was fine and that he should telephone uh, when he would like a next appointment. Kachala came home. The psychiatrist has told him that the earlier he would start the treatment, then the better it would be for him. He told Kachala to come back in two or three days. One week went, went, ten days went, fifteen days went. Kachala did not come. The psychiatrist got worried about why Kachala wasn't coming. The doctor always gets worried when the patient doesn't come. The psychiatrist called Kachalal and said that they have a family-like relation, so why isn't he coming? The psychiatrist said that Kachalal has such a serious problem and this is wrong because they eventually become acute and chronic and this will increase the difficulties for Kachalal. The psychiatrist said that Kachalal should therefore come for the consultations. Kachalal told the psychiatrist that the problem has been solved. The psychiatrist asked Kachalal what he was talking about. The doctor always gets worried when the patient's problem is solved. The psychiatrist asked him how he had solved it. Kachala said that he had, his wife had solved it. The psychiatrist asked him how it was so. Kachala said that he mentioned the problem to his wife and he was scared that she would make fun of him. Kachala's wife told him that if he was scared that there was someone sleeping either on the bed or below the bed, then she would just cut the planks of the bed. Now when Kachala goes to bed, he doesn't think that there's somebody underneath the bed and he sleeps very well. Kachala asked psychiatrist how he could solve this problem by making him go away from the bed. Kachala's problem was with the bed. Either that someone was sleeping below the bed or that someone was sleeping on the bed. If Kachala went to a psychiatrist and far away from his bed, then could his problem be solved? No. 
Kachala's wife immediately solved the problem by removing the planks of the bed. She cut the support of the problem. Why do our problems keep running? The reason for this is that we run away from the problem in order to try and solve the problem. The problem keeps increasing and the difficulties become greater. That is why Sri Krishna said a very nice thing in this word verse, one should find the happiness within and the joy within. Who attains Brahma Nirvana? Who is able to reach this great level? One who finds the happiness within. You run outside for happiness and run outside for solutions to sorrows, that is why we don't get happiness. That is why our sorrows don't go away and that's why our mental turbulence keep increasing and we keep going further and further away from Brahma Nirvana. While one doesn't find both his happiness within and his joy within, then it's not possible to make a human being happy. When Freud had done a lot of research into the field of psychology and was on his deathbed, a journalist asked Freud that psychology had done a lot of research, but if it advances in the future, then will it be able to make human beings happy? Freud said it would not be able to do so. Freud said that developments in psychology will not be able to make human beings happy. In fact, they will keep making human beings more and more unhappy. They will not lead to happiness. The sorrows will stay with everyone. Psychology will prevent sorrows from becoming chronic and will bring them into general unhappiness so that human beings can tolerate them. Psychology can only take it to this level, but it will never be able to make human beings happy. On the other hand, what do the wise people from the East, such as Sri Ram, Sri Krishna, Buddha, Mahavir Swami, Srimad Adi Shankaracharya and all the other great personalities say? They say that your bliss is from within. The bliss is not outside anywhere. These great personalities became blissful themselves and gave others the message of bliss because they started with themselves first. Second, Western psychologists are not ready to believe that one can become free from desire and anger, whereas Eastern psychologists say that this is possible. This is a huge difference in the roots between the two. The third quality that Sri Krishna has described in his verse is finding one's only light within. All three qualities are ones from the inside. They are qualities from within. Happiness is within. Rest and peace is within. The light is also within. Light that comes from the outside is of no use because it can die, whereas the light from inside is that which can never die. The more a person, that person becomes dependent on light from the outside, uh, then it acts like the walking stick on a blind man, whereas the light within is like the eye. The light from outside is like a stick and it can help, but one cannot become totally dependent on it, otherwise he will be completely disabled. The eye gives light and it enables one to walk on his own. This is the light within. In solving the problems of life, the light from outside can never be anywhere near as useful as the light from within. This is because Nobody can understand and experience your problem, difficulty and agony as nicely as you do. Nobody knows your problem better than yourself. And that is why you can solve this problem in the best possible way. Such a person becomes divine and attains to Brahma Nirvana. It becomes absorbed in Brahman and attains to Nirvana. Sri Krishna described these five qualities and now he starts talking about something very uh, nice from this verse. The quality one needs if one wishes to attain to Brahma Nirvana. Sri Krishna takes the topic that he mentioned in this verse forward in the 25th and 26th verses to explain what one needs to attain to Brahma Nirvana. End of the verse. Just going to check.